Hello and welcome to my brand new XCOM Classic Iron Man series. So it's been a while since I've done any sort of gameplay videos, uh, much less any sort of commentary, so please forgive me if when I get started here I'm a little rusty on the commentary uh, in particular because as I say it's been a while since I've done that. But I was trying to think of a way to get back into doing YouTube videos on a more consistent basis and having spent some time with the iOS version of XCOM that was just released recently, it really occurred to me just how much I've wanted to go back through and replay this on a higher difficulty on the PC. Um, those of you who read the blog uh, know that I actually did a guide on how to play through uh, in Iron Man mode, uh, but in that playthrough I was actually playing on normal so what I thought I would do for this series is to attempt <laughs> a classic Iron Man playthrough, which I'm kind of concerned because I know just how difficult this game can be that I may get to a certain point in this playthrough and just have it become impossible for me to finish. Um, but I'm willing to give it a shot if you guys are willing to give it a shot with me. So, without further ado, I'm going to start out here in Classic, go to Advanced, and enable Iron Man, and let's see what happens. So, because I'm assuming that most people who are interested in watching this at this point have already seen the game, I'm going to skip a lot of the cutscenes and stuff where it's appropriate, uh, just because I feel like, you know, it's not really in everyone's best interest for me to sit here and watch a bunch of cutscenes and not really talk or say anything. I feel like the, the thing this could most uh, do to benefit people would be to maybe help them see some more advanced gameplay and how to actually deal with the game on this harder difficulty level. So I'm going to try to balance between letting the game kind of show off some of the cool cutscenes and stuff without like getting bogged down in that. So um, I'm an American, so we're going to make our base in North America. I also find that the air and space bonus becomes kind of useful in the mid-game whenever you really have to get into more advanced uh, aircraft to bring down the more advanced alien vessels. So um, we're going to go with that. I've also played through pretty far in a um, Iron Man classic game with starting out in South America to get the uh, We Have Ways uh, benefit and be able to do the instant interrogations and autopsies and such. But for the purposes of this, Let's go with uh, America. So, the drop site for this operation will be in Canada. All right, starting us out in Canada, which, activity. as those of you familiar with the game will note, really doesn't matter too much. The levels can kind of appear. It seems like no matter which country you deploy in, you have a chance of getting levels that you've seen in other countries for the most part. There might be a few exceptions to that, but generally speaking, it just kind of randomizes Strike everything. One, this is you are free to engage all hostile contacts in the AI. All right. Don't take any chances. So, let me start this whole thing off by saying I love this game. It's one of my all-time favorite games, but even as much as I love it, I'm perfectly willing to acknowledge that it has some shortcomings and some things that really annoy me greatly. This whole thing here with these power lines obstructing the view by default, not real not real a big fan of that, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll soldier on, as it were. So one thing I like to do when I first get into a level is just kind of check the boundaries of it and make sure that I am aware of where the level actually extends out to, because sometimes it'll orient you in weird ways where you think you know which directions you can travel in in the level, but if you don't take the time to check it, sometimes you can get fooled into thinking that, you know, you you can't go in a given direction when you, in actuality you can. So a couple of key things that are important to keep in mind when you first start out in a classic Iron Man game are that your soldiers are pretty worthless. 
Uh, they're terrible shots. They don't make most of the shots they take, uh, even when you have, say, like a 45 or 65 percent chance to hit you're gonna miss a lot of shots so unlike the easier difficulties you really can't count on your guys making shots with any reliability until you start getting up into like the 80 to 100 percent range um, there's a little fudging of the math that clearly takes place on the lower difficulties that makes those uh, lower percentage shots come up more often um, or one might say that the fudging of the math goes the other way where when you're playing on classic difficulty or higher your percentages are actually lower than they appear to be because I cannot even tell you how many times in classic I've taken you know a dozen 65 percent shots in a round and not had a single one of them hit so something to keep in mind um, and it that factors into uh, the way you position your guys in particular because one thing you always want to do especially when you're first starting off is to set up your guys in such a way that you have as many flanking opportunities as possible because flanks are what's going to get you through some of these early missions theoretically with with limited casualties uh, if you just try to go run up at the aliens straight up and, and don't have any kind of flanked positions to work from you're going to get slaughtered because they're going to shoot you and kill you before you ever get a reasonable chance of killing them. So, in this particular level, uh, which of course every level is going to be a bit different, but we can see we've got basically this end of things taken care of. You know, the map doesn't scroll anymore in this direction, so we know that we generally speaking don't have to worry about stuff coming at us from that way we just need to make sure that there's nothing lurking over here that's gonna pop up and and mess us up too badly um, the other thing we need to be really cognizant of though is that what while we do want to create flanking opportunities we don't want to spread ourselves out and risk popping two groups of aliens at the same time because then what that's going to do is turn the tables and give them an immediate flanking opportunity. So say there's some guys over here and some guys over here that we can't see. We want to make sure that as we move our guys up in whichever direction we choose to do that, we kind of keep them together initially just so we don't accidentally trigger more aliens at once than we're ready to deal with. So what I'm going to do is just a kind of exploratory move is to move this guy up to this corner and see if anything becomes visible by doing that and then that's going to dictate what I do from that point forward alright so we've got a group of three sectoids over here munching down on some uh, human remains I'm gonna guess those are alright so that tells us a bunch of important things now we still don't know if there's anything over here but what that tells me is I don't want to move any of my guys any further right than this guy is right now if I can help it because what I don't want to have happen is I'm already engaged with three aliens over here I do not want to trigger any more aliens before I'm ready to deal with them so it's all about keeping these guys together and moving them in this direction without going too far over this way and risking uh, a bad scene. So, because I'm in this position and it's already a decent half cover position, I'm just going to go to Overwatch on this guy so that if they do poke their heads back out, he can at least take a shot. Now, that shot isn't very likely to hit, but stranger things have happened, and I think it's worth it to explore that possibility. Now, a tempting thing to do might be to bring more guys in on overwatch like over in this direction but what I think I really want to do here is concentrate on repositioning these three guys so that they have more of a flanking opportunity in subsequent turns so what I want to do is move them over here without risking the aliens becoming aware of them so what I'm gonna do is move to say one square back from the corner and hopefully that will get me close to where I want to be without them being able to see me so that I can pop out in the next turn around this corner and potentially get some flanks on these guys. 
So the other thing I want to do though is I want to make sure I move one of these guys into a potential firing position so that if any of them do come around this corner I at least get one overwatch shot off. So we're going to move this guy up here to the solid cover, put him on overwatch, and then the other one we will dash, uh, say, up to, well, We'll take a little bit of a risk and not put him into cover per se, just so he has a clearer movement line to where I want him to be next. Because uh, most likely if an alien does come around this corner, it's going to shoot at the guy in front anyway. So and I'm just saying guys in general. You know, I'm not going to differentiate between male and female characters here if they do come up. Uh, but, alright. So you could hear the aliens doing their buffs, where they basically make themselves more potent. Yeah. And see that, that was a nice crossfire opportunity there. So when that alien came into view, they pretty much got ghosted. That was really an ideal. That was a great reaction shot. Like, usually at that distance, a fresh soldier wouldn't be able to hit anything. So the fact that I was able to do any damage there at all was really good. Now, I did just get hit, which is a problem. Um, unfortunately, now I think I should still be able to move into this more solid cover and still take that flanking shot, but we'll see if I lose the flanking shot opportunity when I do this. The thing is, I don't want to leave my guy out here exposed, because if I take the shot first, then I won't be able to move, and with him only having one health left... Uh, I really want to get him into some more solid cover. So even if I lose this shooting opportunity, it's worth it to potentially keep the soldier alive. Okay, so no good. I didn't I didn't lose my line of sight. I'm in better cover. So let's take this flanking shot opportunity. You can see here, you know, under normal circumstances, this would probably be like a 25 or a 45% shot. But because the aliens flanked, I'm getting a 65% shot here, which, again in this classic mode still not a guarantee to hit or even close to a guarantee but pretty decent and definitely worth taking so we're going to get that because we got the little cutscene there you always know if your shot's going to hit if you see the little cutscene where the camera breaks away and gives you a more dramatic view of the shot so again off to a really good start here like a lot of a lot of these initial plans that i had are really working out um, Again, looking at the edge of the map here, you can see this is a pretty safe area for me to move into. And I want to continue to work on setting up flanks. I've got one more alien to kill over here, which I don't have line of sight on. So what I want to do is kind of move over to this uh, half cover so that if he's anywhere in this cone, I should be able to get a, a, a good look at him. All right, good. Um, and I say good because I kind of was taking a little bit of a risk going into half cover here. Um, but now I can set up on Overwatch, so if he does come into view, I'll get a free shot on him. Okay, now um, there's a kind of conundrum that you have whenever you're playing this game where you have to balance... Uh, aggressiveness versus survivability. So one thing we have to keep in, co in consideration is this guy is basically out of the fight now. You know, he's he's at one health. If I take too many risks with him, or any risks really of any kind, I'm likely to lose him. So at this point I've effectively got three soldiers even though I technically have four. So i got to be a little bit careful about how I approach this because I don't have full firepower to bring to bear unless the, the guy I keep back gets lucky and gets a lucky shot off. Um, so what I want to do is move up in here and look for good cover opportunities without exposing myself too much. And I can really afford to play it a little bit safe here because I've got a numerical advantage of three on one. So I, what I'm going to do is just move these guys into position and set up some uh, overwatch opportunity so that if this alien does step out into this view, uh, I'll be able to hopefully get enough free shots off to actually take him out. So here's a really good solid cover spot for me to get into. I'm going 
to do that and set up the overwatch again and hopefully this guy will be dumb enough to step out and all three of my guys will be able to get free shots on him an unexpected flank again okay so now we've got another set of aliens activated we're witnessing something never before seen in recorded history Cover my flank. okay so now things have gotten way more dramatic <laughs> very quickly um, so now what we've got to start looking at doing is potentially sacrificing some of these damaged units for the sake of making sure these aliens get taken out um, because at a certain point this guy is more valuable as a grenade thrower than he is as a as a rifle shot and he's already flanked by these guys so I can eliminate that flank by coming into this cover but if I'm gonna move up this close I need to do something that's guaranteed to do some damage to these aliens so what this is gonna be is a grenade toss situation and I am gonna be exposing my back flank to potentially to this guy but it's worth it a because the damage I do with this grenade is gonna be uh, a worthy trade even if this guy ends up getting killed and with three guys over on this side this guy isn't likely to live past the next turn or in, to a point where he can actually back flank me so I'm going to run this guy up here to this solid cover, eliminate their flanking opportunity, and as you can see here, we've got aliens kind of clustered, and that's really the ideal time when you want to look at using a grenade, because grenades do three points of damage, they each have three points of health. Uh, even though I have a flank shot opportunity, it's absolutely clear that this is a grenade situation. Now what's gonna happen is hopefully I'm gonna kill both of these guys with this grenade if I'm lucky and the science advisor lady is gonna complain about this because I'm destroying artifacts that we might get from the aliens by doing this but if if the choice is use a explosive and keep one of your guys alive or uh, not you always wanna keep your guys alive because they only get better by leveling up and surviving missions so for that guy to take out two guys with one grenade shot like that totally worth it and gives him that much more chance of surviving the round so even though she's gonna protest about that grenade toss I'm gonna say in my experience with the game that is clearly the move that you wanna make in that situation alright so uh, we got this guy over here now probably my best bet honestly because if I look at my firing percentage I'm only at 28 percent here but if I roll up to the corner cover on this guy I can probably get a pretty high percentage shot off at point blank range and have a good shot at killing him and I still have uh, other guys here to back me up if things get sideways so I'm gonna take a shot and run up here on this corner cover and see what I can do Alright, so as you can see, I get the flanking effect because I'm now at his side, and that's a 96% shot. Excellent probability here. I mean, I've missed a 96% shot in classic mode. It happens, but I feel pretty confident taking this. Alright, so uh, basically, if I've done my math correctly, we have one more alien over in this direction that we need to worry about. He probably scurried somewhere behind this boxcar uh, whenever the animation triggered and these guys came over here. I think he maybe went over this way or perhaps back here. And I think this is going to be the last alien for this initial level. So let's try to get him killed without losing any of our guys. That's really ideally what we want to do here. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to be a little bit conservative in how I approach this. So let's look at, uh, let's see, do I have another move here to make? Yeah, we're going to move this guy first. And let's move him into a cover position, say, here. 
Okay, so there's our alien. And let's get a look at that angle. So it's a 45% shot. Now, if I want to be really thorough about this, I probably just try to go for the grenade. Um, this is another thing that kind of annoys me about the game, if I'm being honest, is the way how touchy and how twitchy these uh, controls can be when it comes to like setting up the grenade shots and throwing things. Like I almost feel like there should be a delay when you get to the edge of the screen before it starts scrolling, or it should scroll slower so it's a little easier to manage. But that's what I was trying to show you, is that at this position, I can't uh, get the grenade toss off anyway, so it's kind of a moot point. So even though this is only a 45% shot chance, I don't think he's very likely to hit me in this half cover, and I'd rather take the chance at just ending this. Uh, this might end up being a mistake. Like the, the smarter play here might be to go for hunker down and make my full cover, or my half cover full cover. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little bit of a chance here. Oh, actually I'm not, and I'll tell you why. Because this guy only has one health left, and if I get hit at all, that means this soldier is going down. Um, so actually, because this isn't the soldier that I thought it was, let's look at some other options that I have for getting into better cover. Um, so I could go here, which would really, I think, pretty much eliminate his sight line on me or at least make it very difficult for him to even take a shot at me. I could hunker down and stay where I am in full in what would effectively be full cover or I can take the shot. And this is one of those moments where no matter what I do here, I'm probably going to end up second guessing myself a little bit because if I take the shot and I hit him, then great, the level's probably over and I've successfully done this. But if I take the shot and miss, I've left myself in a position where I'm very likely to get this soldier killed. And I think the risk is just not worth the potential gain when I have so many other options available to me. So now the only question is, do I try to absolutely break the sight line while staying in cover, or do I just hunker down where I am and hope for a flanking opportunity? I think I'm going to try to break the sight line and see how that works. So let's go with that. Yeah, so that broke the sight line, uh, and now I'm in this situation where I know where this guy is now, so I can more effectively plot my, my move up to him. Now, this guy has full health, so I can be a little bit more risky in terms of how I approach uh, moving him up. I still don't want to be crazy about it because, you know, one good critical hit and he's still gonna die even though he has full health so I'm gonna move up see if I can get a sight line yeah there's a sight line Let's see if I can get that 45 percent shot from here now I'm more confident in taking this with this guy with full health so let's see if we can end this okay so that was a, a total miss now would the other guy have missed who knows but we'll see Okay, so that guy moved into a flank, but he was just as bad at shooting as me. Alright, so we still got this situation pretty well under control. Now, this soldier has already used their grenade, and they're at one health. Uh, so I want to be real, extremely careful about how I utilize them. But I think one thing I have to consider is the flanking potential here. Um... So what I may want to do is move up, see if I can get the flanking shot, and if I can, it might be worth it to take that and try to, to finish this guy off. Uh, worst case scenario, if my percentage is bad here, I hunker down and get full cover and hope for the best. Okay, so I don't have the shot, but I also don't have line of sight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for an overwatch here. In case he comes around this corner, I should be able to peg him. Alright. So, now looking at this side of the map again. Um, 
what I definitely want to do is look at getting this guy into a, po a flanking position here on the left. Now, because this is the first mission in the game, I'm pretty confident that there were only six aliens on this map, so I'm being a little bit more um, cavalier than I might be in a later game mission, kind of dashing over here. And But I'm also going to be a little bit conservative because I don't want this guy to come around this corner or be able to shoot at me from here. I just want to position myself so I'm ready to shoot at him on the next turn. Uh, so what we're going to do is go here. Okay, so this guy has a shot, but he's also in an exposed position. I need to get myself into some proper cover if I'm going to take this. Now, the other thing I need to consider is that this guy does have a grenade, so if I move up, I should be able to get a grenade tossed over this train car and maybe just end this. Um, so, let's move up into this cover position. We'll check the percentage. It's probably going to be pretty bad. Yeah, 39%. That's not anything I want to trifle with. So let's see if I can set up the grenade so that it lands behind him. Because what you really want is the explosive force of the grenade to be behind, to be in such a way that it hits your target full on. Like you don't want any of that grenade's explosive force to be masked by like a cover uh, item or something like that. So we just want to make sure this is out here in the open where the full damage of it can hit him. And that should do the trick. And there you have it. So all the aliens are dead. All my guys survived. You really can't ask for much more from the first mission in a classic Iron Man game. You know, two of my guys got wounded, and ideally you don't want anybody to take any damage, but given how difficult this game is at, at the classic difficulty level, I will take two wounded guys happily. <laughs> so we're going to fly back to base here and see the results of our effort. Welcome to XCOM HQ, Commander. I'm Central Officer Bradford. Hey, buddy. My role in this project is twofold. Providing tactical support for our field operations. Cool. And keeping you briefed on the current situation. I'm My down. efforts should allow you to focus on the bigger issues at hand. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, we have a soldier waiting for a promotion in the barracks. Actually, if we're lucky, we have two soldiers waiting for a promotion because... Well, actually, several of those guys could have promotions because I believe almost everybody got a kill on that mission. So, yeah, check that out promoted. Okay, so um, let's see what let's see what uh, classes we ended up with here. So we got the run and gun ability on the assault guy with their shotgun. That'll be useful for sure. And of course the first upgrade you don't get to pick. Uh, this is just dictating who the class, what class the character is going to be. The heavy weapons specialist provides a crucial nice. service to the squad. Nice. I'm betting we're going to get uh, I bet this was the guy that got the two grenade kills. Because uh, I haven't figured this out for certain, but I feel like sometimes what your guys do initially in their in their initial outing dictates what class they end up being. Uh, I also think that the body types of the characters might dictate it to a certain extent as well. Our snipers specialize in dealing massive amounts nice of sniper, from good. Floor, you know, I... I I would have liked to have seen everybody get promoted and end up with one of each kind, but I think this is a pretty pretty ideal first set of promotions um, because, honestly, the support class becomes way more useful later in the game, so getting one of each of the other types right Commander off the bat the is pretty labs. cool. Commander to the research labs. Um, and we got two of our guys still active, and the, those are two that got promotions, so that'll be good. So whenever we do our next mission, which will likely have two rookies and these two promoted guys in it, they should be at least somewhat better equipped to handle things. Yes, I heard you going to the research lab. And the research team is waiting your orders. We'll get started as so these are our new research projects available, which is what we're going to go pick now. And we got... Um, 
We got our six sectoid corpses. We probably would have gotten more weapon fragments had we not used those grenades. But you know what? I'd rather have my guys alive. So there's that. <laughs> okay. Yes, I hear you. Research lab. The only problem with starting a new game is you Hello, have to Commander. go through all those initial cutscenes again. But fortunately, you can skip them. <laughs> uh, so new research. Um, so as I recall. If we start with xenobiology, that's what's going to trigger the event which is going to enable us to... Uh, well, actually, I think no matter what we research here, we're going to get the objective to do the skeleton... or the, not the skeleton key, but the um, arc thrower and do the live capture. I think if you do xenobiology, it comes up faster, because I think as soon as she's done the autopsy on the alien, that's when it triggers that event. So if I wanted to delay that a little bit and try to get some more missions under my belt, I might want to pick one of these other options. Um, as I recall, uh, this is going to lead to the scope Commander, upgrade for our guys. Uh, and this is going to lead to the, the not the um, first armor, but the first kind of like Kevlar vest type upgrade. Uh, given that we do have a sniper now in our midst, I may do this scope upgrade uh, just so that that gets done a little faster. And that'll also test my theory on whether or not xenobiology actually triggers the arc thrower uh, objective. So let's do that. I realize our troops have to put their own and again, she's first, here complaining about using the explosives, use but don't explosives listen to that nonsense. Keep your guys alive and use your grenades and rockets and such if you need to. I mean, obviously, if you can complete a mission without using explosives, that's ideal. But don't let your guys die because you were worried about getting more uh, weapon fragments or, or artifacts from the aliens. It's just not worth it. Because uh, while... Um, you know, uh, artifacts and, and things of that nature are important to the game. Like, having high-level, experienced soldiers is so key when you get to, like, the mid and late game that really you should be doing your absolute best to not let anybody die if you can help it. Like, if it's... When you go to sacrifice a, a soldier to achieve an objective, it needs to be for a darn good reason, or it's just not worth it. Ah, Commander... I was wondering when you'd be stopping by. Welcome to engineering. Hey, buddy. Okay, we're going to skip that and uh, get into this situation. Now, we didn't get a support guy, so I'm not even going to bother making this medic kit. And uh, the other thing we probably want to do right off the bat is get cooking on our first satellite because we get the one satellite uplink for free and one satellite for free but if we want to be able to launch a second satellite before the first council meeting we probably want to build that now uh, just and get it out of the way uh, so that that's at least being worked on while we're doing the other stuff we need to take care of and that should do it for engineering for now and uh, let's see okay so yeah, they want us to go to mission control. Okay, so I think this is probably a pretty good place for me to stop this video. Um, what I'll probably do is just uh, scan for activity until we get to the next mission and then um, kind of judge what people think of this series and kind of uh, maybe wait to get some feedback on the video before I do the next mission and see what people think. Um, maybe give me some ideas about you know how many missions you think I should do per video uh, kind of things you want to see if you want to see more about the base building stuff or more about the combat stuff or if you like a mixture of it like kind of is in this video uh, let me know and also just how people respond to this is probably going to dictate how frequently I do these or, or how seriously I take them so you know if, if you're enjoying this and you want to see more of it or you, you find it useful, definitely let me know because that's going to be the thing that encourages me to keep doing it. <laughs> if, if nobody watches these and nobody comments on them or likes them then or shares them, uh, I'm not going to 
be real compelled to keep doing it. I mean, I love this game, and I love talking about it and showing it off, and uh, maybe trying to help people out who are who are trying to do uh, similar things uh, themselves. Um, but it definitely takes time to do videos like this, and uh, I only want to do them if you know, people are enjoying them and, and want to continue to see them. So um, let me just scan ahead here, see what's going on. All right, so there's our first alien abduction. Um, I think we might have gotten some people healed up. Commander, uh, we picked up multiple requests for assistance. Okay, so this is probably a good a good thing to cover before I wrap this up. Um, usually, you get these choices, you know, where you're going to go and help out, and there's a couple factors to consider. Obviously, um, in the early game, I think the two most important things are engineers and money. Uh, and I say that because satellites are so hugely important to managing the panic levels in the early stages of the game, and you need both engineers and money to uh, do that. Now, it might be really tempting to go after this money, because it's a moderate difficulty mission, and uh, it's going to get you $200 uh, dollars or whatever that... <laughs> whatever that unit of money is uh, to, to spend on things but what I'm going to recommend is that you do the engineer based missions uh, because you really want to get the amount of engineers that you're going to need to get additional satellite uplinks as quickly as possible and the more engineers you have the less it's going to cost you to build the stuff you need to build. So it's actually going to save you a lot of money in the long run to get more engineers up and running faster. And as you can see, um, we're, we're going to be in a bad panic situation here if we don't go and deal with the Argentina situation. But because we're building another satellite, if this panic gets too out of control, we should be able to use the satellite to deal with it. And I think you know, worst case scenario, we don't go and do this. Maybe this jumps up two points and we still have a point margin of error on the panic level. So, given that these are both moderate difficulty and they're both one level of panic, I'm going to say we go with the engineers and uh, try to do this mission first. Um, so, let's confirm that. And let's see. Okay, so it looks like we didn't have enough time pass for either of our other veteran soldiers to uh, become available, but that's okay. Uh, we'll keep everybody using frag grenades for now. There's really nothing, no alternative gear we should be selecting. And, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and launch this mission, and I'll get to the point where the mission starts, and that's where I'll stop the video. <laughs> I really do love the way that they captured a lot of the essence of the original XCOM game and a lot of the way this is presented. Like, it, it definitely has a cool, like, retro but modern feel that I really appreciate. We'll deploying to Russia for this one. It's one and of the things that always keeps me coming back to this game is how much it reminds me of the original and makes me feel nostalgic for the original but still offers a lot of really satisfying modern gameplay. Alright, so, as I said before, if you like this video, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, uh, please subscribe, like, share this thing, comment on it, you know, let me know that this is something that you're enjoying and that it's worth my time to do more of it, and uh, by all means, if that's the case, then I will continue on with this. But for now, I'm just going to uh, save and exit, and we'll pick this right up where we left off if there is a second video. So, thanks for watching, and good times.